This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this 3D text effect using GIMP. And in order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to download and, and install a specific font called Learning Curve Pro. And it's a free font, and I'll have it linked in the description of the uh, in the description of the video. So go ahead and download that font and install it before opening up GIMP, and then we'll be good to go. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a new document. So we'll go to File New. And the size I'm just going to use um, 1280 by 720. Go ahead and click OK. And I want to fill in the background here. I want to fill this in with the background color similar to what you see here. So to do that, I'm just going to change this color to a shade of blue I want to use, maybe something like this. Go ahead and click OK. And then we can go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And that's pretty good right there. I'm going to go with that. So uh, the first thing we're going to do after that is create our text. So I'm going to grab the text tool over here. And let me flip around the foreground and background color here so we get the white text. And I'm going to click on the canvas. And I'm just going to write in ink. And mine's going off the page a little bit. You're going to want to come over here. And where it says font, click on this and go down here until you find the, lear uh, the learning curve font. Size, I'm going to bring down the size of that a little bit. You might have to make yours bigger depending on how uh, where you started out here. Um, color white, I'm going to leave that as it is. And maybe I'll make that a little bigger actually. Increase the size a bit. That's pretty good. And what I'll do now is I'll grab the move tool and I'll just put this towards the center of the page. Like that. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And I'll put that right there. And I'm going to take the opacity of that layer and bring that down a little bit. And what I want to do now is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to click the button that says create a new layer. And we want to use transparency. Go ahead and click OK. And I want to set two different colors here in the foreground and background. I'm going to set the two different colors that you see used here in the gradient of this text, like a darker pink and then a lighter pink. So to do that, I'll click on this uh, foreground color. And I'll put this all the way up at the top right. And I'll take this slider and bring this towards the top so we get like a really deep shade of pink, almost red like that. I'll go ahead and click OK. And I'll click the background color, and I'm going to do the same thing, only use like a lighter shade, maybe something down here like that. And we can go ahead and click OK. And what I'll do now is I'm going to create a circle. So I'm going to grab the circles, uh, the ellipse select tool, and I'm going to click and drag to create an ellipse. I'm going to hold shift so it locks to proportion so it's a perfectly round circle like that. And once we've created the circle, I'm going to come over here to the blend tool. And uh, for mode, we want this set to normal. Gradient, we want foreground to background, like you see here. Foreground to background, that nice smooth transition right there. Uh, shape, linear. And once we've done that, I'm going to bring the cursor to the bottom of the circle, just on the outside. And then just click and drag straight up to the outside of the top of the circle. And then I'll hold control so it locks it perfectly onto the vertical axis, like that. And we can let go. And you'll see we have created uh, a gradient on that circle. And we can go to select none. And then I want to take uh, the, uh, the scaling tool right here, scale, and click on that. And I want to grab this bounding box down here and just scale that down. I'm going to hold control to lock the proportions. I'll scale that down about that much like that. Go ahead and hit enter. And what I'll do next is I'll right click on that layer and go to alpha to selection and then go to edit, copy. And now we can turn off the visibility of that layer and go to select none. And what I want to do now, I want to click on this text layer, and I want to create a new layer just above that. Again, using transparency, go ahead and click OK. And let's come over to our paintbrush tool. And for the brush over here, we're going to use, we're going to click on this brush over here, what we have in our clipboard, what we copied. And for the mode, we're going to use normal. Um, dynamic, we want to change the dynamic to dynamic, dynamics off. So change it to that. And we want smooth stroke and bring the quality and weight all the way up. And once you've put those settings in, you, if you notice, you can draw with that shape and create that 3D style, uh, uh, sort of like a shape as you draw it. And I'm gonna take the, uh, the, uh, the size of this and bring this down a little bit. And if you notice, if you're good enough, if you have a steady hand, you could actually freehand that. But um, I don't have a very steady hand with this sort of thing. This may be really useful if you have a uh, like a drawing tablet, this would come in really handy. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the paths tool instead. So I'm going to grab the paths tool 
And let me zoom in on this text over here so we get so it's centered within the within our field of view right here. And I'm going to click to point to create a point at the bottom of the letter I. And then I'll click and drag to create another point up here. Actually, you know what? Let me undo that by hitting Control Z. I'm just going to click to put a straight point right there. Just click once, don't click and drag. And I'll come down here to the dip of this curve right here and just click and put another point. Then I'll come up here and put one at this point and then down here and then up here. Don't worry about the line not following the curve of the text. We're going to fix that in just a minute. I'll put another point down here. I'll put another point up here right before it starts to curve and then straight over right after it's done curving on the other side. So we're going to cut right through that curve right there and I'll put another point down here and then I'll put another one up here and then another one over here and then towards the end over there. And what we're going to do now is click and drag these lines to make them take the shape of the curvature of the text. And you might want to click and drag over, um, hold the control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm just taking these little handles here on the outside and just shaping them so it makes a nice curve. And in order to get those handles, you just take the line and you click and drag it like that and you can grab that handle and just position it accordingly. I'll put this out here. This may take a little bit of practice to get the hang of. Uh, it's something that, uh, it's, 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 it's a different skill set in and of itself. I'll take this one, put it out here. Put this one out here. Maybe do something like that. Take this one, put it over there like that. And again, I'm gonna create more. Just click and drag the line to get our handles to appear. I'll put this out here like that. Take this one put this straight out. We want to get this smooth. We want to get these lines and these curves going as smooth as possible in order to get the best result. And a little a little uh, trick to keep in mind is that you see these two different handles right here? We want them going as if they're in a straight line. If you notice, this one's this one dips up a little bit compared to this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust it so that it's both, so that they both look like they're running parallel with each other like that. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Bring that line down. Take this handle and straighten that out. Again, we want to make that parallel with the other handle. Let me take this one and bring this in like that. Then I want to take this line and click and drag to create this curve up here. And again, I want to take this handle, make it parallel with the other handle. Do the same thing over here. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to take this line and bring this to the left just a little bit. Then we can take this handle, and bring that out there like that. Put that there. Maybe adjust that just a little bit. I want to take this line, for the letter K, put that over there, put this over here. Uh, I'll, I'll do this one next, just to get this out of the way. Like that, and then take this final one over here and just adjust that as needed. And right there, I'm going to leave that as it is right there. I think that looks pretty good. If not, I could always go back and edit it. And what I'll do now is right here where it says stroke path, go ahead and click on that. And down here, we want to choose stroke with paint tool. And for the paint tool, we want paint drop, uh, paintbrush selected. And we want to select emulate brush dynamics and go ahead and click stroke. And it's going to take our brush or what we have copied to the clipboard and brush it going along that shape. And if you don't like how it came out, you can undo it by going to edit undo. And then you can go ahead and adjust the line. You could adjust this shape over here, this path, and then do it again and see how it looks. But for this one, I think it came out okay on my end. You may have to play with it a little bit just to get the hang of it. And once we've done that, uh, we can go back to the paintbrush tool and just click right here to put the dot over the eye. And I'll go ahead and turn off the visibility of the text layer and zoom out. And as you can see, we've created our 3D style text using GIMP. So that's how you can do that. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.